Hi folks, welcome back to the channel. My name's Colin, call sign MM0OPX if you've not been here before. And if you like the video or you like any of my other videos, then uh, please think about hitting that subscribe button and the uh, notification for any future videos. So, planning just a short video here and I just want to give a little bit of, a, of an overview of this uh, heavy duty drive-on mast I made last year. So this was one of the early projects I made during the uh, first lockdown uh, of 2020 when I was starting to get my... Um, equipment together for working portable so the kind of the background is I looked to see what I could buy um, I do try and make my own stuff but if I can buy something and it's probably as cheap as me making my own then I'll just buy it um, but there was a few kind of cheap masks around um, 30 40 pounds um, but they were really lightweight really small not what I wanted there was one that I seen that I liked but it was nearly 500 pounds now it had a tilting plate here, so I had a tilting mast, which I could have incorporated into this quite easily, but I don't need that function, but £500, so I thought there's no way I'm going to spend that kind of money. So what I did was I just bought my own material, I cut it with um, my own angle grinder, um, I then took it up to my uh, parents' house, my dad's a mechanic, so I borrowed his MIG welder, um, welded it up and then painted it. So, let's give you some uh, some measurements if you'd like to uh, perhaps make your own, have a go at making your own, but it's, it's certainly not difficult. So the total length of this is 3 feet or 90 centimetres, um, whatever you prefer. So you need, uh, this is actually 40 millimetre by 40 millimetre, um, uh, 3 millimetre thick um, angle. Um, these cross members are 50 by 25 or 2 by 1 inch. Um, eighth inch thick or three mil, so four of those. So obviously your tires are sitting here. I wanted to have this long because I wanted a little bit of separation from the vehicle um, to the antenna itself. So that's the reason why it's um, it's so big. Um, this vertical section here, where the where the pole mounts into, this is three by three um, by eighth inch or seventy five by seventy five um, by three millimeter thick. And what I did was I cut out two grooves and, it wel and I welded in two M12 uh, captive nuts and I just used two M12 bolts. I really want to weld a, a flat onto this because I'd like them to be um, kind of butterfly bolts um, type of affair. Um, and the paint that I've actually used on this is a uh, paint that we have here called Hammerite and it's um, it's quite an old paint that we've, we've had here and it's, it's, it's traditionally used for painting directly onto rust and it, it, it lasts um, a long, long time. Most people use it on their gates and metal fences and stuff. I don't think it's as good as it used to be, um, but it's still it's still a good paint. Um, I suppose if you had access to a galvanising facility, that would be even even better. But for, for all that I'm going to use this, um, galvanising uh, is just fine. Um, this little extra strengthening piece I put here, I'm not sure I really needed that. Um, but me just over engineering things, I thought I would um, I would add that in. Right, I'll bring the camera down and I'll give you a little bit of a closer look. But there's not a lot to it. So yeah, you can see. Oh, now if I could move the camera right. Move the gimbal. So there you could see captive uh, nuts that have been welded in place there. Um, so there you go, two of those. So I currently have got to take a spanner or a pair of pliers. Um, hand tight would probably be enough, but so what actually goes in there is I'll grab it. So this is my lightweight pole. This is 22 millimeter because it's just so hard what I had lying around. If I can do this, there we go. So this clamps into here. And just tighten this up. And this setup, this arrangement here, this is for my um, six meter life breeze propole. So that's that's what I do. That's my that's that's what I use. So again, these clamps were just made up to is, is what I actually had to hand. But that's it's absolutely solid, it's not going anywhere. I do have a bigger pole, I have a, a steel scaffolding pole which is a real heavy brute um, and I, I've used that a couple of times but I've used that when I've been using the 12 meter spider beam pole um, so yeah I'll actually I'll give you a wee measurement of um, between here so what is that 
um, 250 between the, here. Um, so the one measurement that you will need is what difference do you make between the peaks and then how I worked that one out is I have a car dealership which is about a couple of hundred yards as the crow flies. So they have um, lots of these drive on masts but just these really lightweight ones and they have obviously the, the flags for the cars that they're selling but they're, the cars are right on the road, on the pavement. So what I did was I just went down one night with the tape measure in my pocket and uh, I just leaned across and I just measured this. So the distance um, peak to peak I have on here is 180 millimetres or 18 centimetres. So you need to work that out with no money. Um, I've made it so it suits a range of vehicles. So if you make it for small tyres, it'll fit big tyres. But if I was only probably only, only going to use it on bigger tyres, I would have made this a bit wider. But um, I have used this on my wife's old car, which had 14 inch wheels. And currently on my van, I've got um, 16 inch wheels, but you could use it bigger. Um, so that's 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 the sizes that uh, I made between the peaks, and that's that's why I've made them that. So yeah, it's pretty simple. Um, you know, don't be afraid in having a go. I'll, I'll put a link in the description um, from the company that I got the material from. But uh, you're probably as well getting it from um, blacksmiths, as we call them here, or um, steel stockholders. You know, it's, it's not a lot of money. And probably all told for the mast, it probably cost me less than £50 um, to do everything. But obviously I have, I have access to the tools, which makes it a lot easier. Um, but perhaps if you know a welder, um, I'm sure they would, they would help you out. Um, and make this up and it's a cheap project and it's something that's going to last you a long time okay just a quick one as i said 73 and we'll see you on the next video